Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Rachel Koo, and this beautiful northern city is now my new home. But I, along with most Swedes, often escape to the tranquility of a little cabin in the countryside. Look at that! It's huge! Bit of a mouthful, that, isn't it? My Wallenberger burgers. Two waffles ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a pea soup without the mustard. A cake worthy of a celebration, I think. Yay! <laughs> Exploring Sweden and all the culinary delights it has to offer will be the source of inspiration in my Swedish kitchen. Welcome to Smörgen. This beautiful little fishing village north of Gothenburg is the mecca for ocean fishing and partying. The summers are filled with tourists enjoying the finer things in life, like good food and wine, as well as the stunning scenery. Now it is the very end of the tourist season, and for many, this is the real Smurgen. Hey, Sixten! Hi, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much. It's the first day of this year's lobster season. I'm out on the sea with Sixten, and we're going to go fish for some lobsters. The excitement can be felt as every fisherman dream of catching the black gold of the ocean that sell for as much as €8,000 per kilo. The start of the lobster season is always 7 o'clock the first Monday after September the 20th every year. What fabulous weather we have today. Typical sea weather, I think. I'm used to it. I've got my yellow mac, so I'm all right. Let's hope the lobsters like it too. Hard work, Miss. <laughs> oh, wow! Woo! I like it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I got some lobsters. First time lucky. Too small. So, bye bye. Not going in the pot today. You live another life. Bye bye, lobster. In you go. Whoop. All lobsters smaller than nine centimetres or approximately three and a half inches from head to the beginning of its tail, as well as all lobsters with roe must be thrown back into the ocean. The big one. Massive. It's huge. It's a monster lobster. Yes, yes. Really, it's really very, big. Very good. <laughs> and look at the size of those claws. Yes. And you don't want to put your fingers there. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's pretty good. That will make one very tasty lobster. Yes. Thank you so much, Sixten. I will take this with me. You, you can. Give it a kiss! <laughs> All right, I don't want to get too attached yeah. to the lobster because I'm yeah. going to be cooking it. <laughs> Serving lobster doesn't mean you have to serve it with a fancy side. The humble cabbage turned into a lemon caraway cabbage salad will make a delicious accompaniment. This salad's inspired by a little takeaway salad you often get in Sweden with your pizza. It's citrusy, it has a nice kind of vinegary dressing to it. Simple, but quite tasty. So you want to take out the core of the cabbage, the tough bit. Just take out the core here. and then thinly slice it. Season your cabbage with a generous amount of salt and toss it well together. You almost want to massage the cabbage. All the slices of cabbage get coated with the salt. And what's going to happen is the salt draws out 
like the excess liquid and you end up with a really crunchy salad. So I'm going to let that sit for an hour. Now I'm going to make my dressing. I'm going to zest a lemon. Some olive oil. White wine vinegar. Black pepper. And a little bit of sugar to take the edge off. I'm going to just pour the dressing on top. Give that a little mix. Two other things I need. I'm going to toast some caraway seeds. And while they're toasting, I'm going to cut up my lemon. So you want to remove the pith because we're going to use the lemon flesh. Take out the white centre and any extra seeds or pips you might see, and then roughly chop this up. That gets added to your salad. So you know when your caraway seeds are done is when you can actually smell them. So they go on top. Right, now for the lobster. Ask your fishmonger to prepare your lobster for you if you don't feel confident doing it yourself. Clean it up a little bit. And they're just going to go straight on the grill. If you don't have an open fire, what you could do is put it under the grill in the oven. Just make sure it's nice and hot. Langoustine or large prawns make a delicious alternative. I'm going to brush them with a little bit of butter. Really don't need much at this point. Keep it simple. Chop up some parsley for your garnish. Adds a bit of freshness to the dish too. A few lemon wedges to serve. I'm going to put my salad in the serving bowl. To my salad, I'm going to add a little bit of salmon roux. You don't have to, but I like that salty popping sensation you get from the salmon roux. Right, I think the lobster's done. Now, I deliberately didn't turn them over because I didn't want them to lose their juices. So what you're looking for is the flesh to go from translucent to opaque, and then you know it's done. So serve with a little bit of lemon, a sprinkling of finishing salt, and a tiny bit of parsley. And that's all you need to serve up a delicious lobster. When it comes to fika, there's so many more sweet treats you can choose from than the regular cinnamon bun. And one of my favourites is caucus topper or coconut macaroon. I'm going to melt some butter. And to the butter, I'm going to add some lemon zest. This is just going to bring a little bit of freshness. Sugar. And then half a teaspoon of salt. Give it a little mix. While that's melting, I'm going to toast my coconut. This is an important step. If you don't toast your coconut, you're not going to release all those lovely nutty flavours. Spread it out evenly. And you want to toast it until it's golden brown. You release all that lovely nutty aroma. Once your butter's melted, take it off the heat and let it cool down. Time to check on the coconut. Let's have a look. So the coconut, you can see it's toasted really nicely. You've got that lovely golden brown colour. You can smell the toastiness. Now I'm going to mix together my other ingredients. Some ground almonds. And then a rather unusual addition, some sesame seeds. I added them because it was a happy accident. I didn't have enough ground almonds, so I thought I'd put sesame seeds in instead. And it actually works really well as another kind of dimension in terms of the nutty flavour. And then your toasted coconut. Then mix everything together. And now I can add my wet ingredients. Three eggs. And I'm just gonna roughly incorporate that in before I add the melted butter. Now when you add the melted butter, make sure it's cooled 
Because if it's not, then you might cook the eggs and gently stir that together. Right, all mixed together. Time to roll up your sleeves. Gets a bit messy at this point. So you need to take a small amount, about the size of a golf ball, and form it into like little peaks, little mountains. Obviously, you could make them a lot larger, but I quite like them when they're just one or two mouthfuls. These are great little biscuits to make if you have friends who have a gluten allergy. There's no gluten in these. And they taste good. They're gonna go in the oven, preheated to 200 degrees for about half an hour. I'm gonna coat my mountains with some white chocolate. Just wanna roughly chop it up. Helps with the melting. If you're not into white chocolate, use dark chocolate. It's really up to you. I've got a bain-marie here, so a little bit of water at the bottom, a bowl to sit on top, and melt my chocolate. Be careful you don't let the water underneath boil, because if it's too hot, then what happens with the chocolate is it splits. They've got the perfect golden brown colour. And then if you turn them over, they should be caramelised on the bottom as well. Okay, now the easiest way to coat them in chocolate is to do them while they're still warm. So make sure you've got your chocolate all melted and all you need to do is dip them in. So now they're starting to look like little mountains. Got the snow on the top. A little Swedish touch with some lingonberries. It's not what you normally put on, but I actually like the bright red pop, but also the lingonberries add a bit of acidity. If you don't have lingonberries, you can use red currants instead. And that's it. My white chocolate berry mountains. A little sweet alternative to a traditional cinnamon bun. Smörgen, with its 1,300 inhabitants, is called the liveliest summer town in Sweden. It's hard to imagine on a day like today, but if you come here for the food, this time of the year is best. Time for a little break to warm up. And what better way than to try a local favourite snack, an open fish sandwich. Tack! Time to tuck in. I have a Gravlux sandwich here. It was interesting, when I first moved to Sweden, I was trying to learn Swedish, which I still am today, and I used Swedish cookbooks as a way of learning the language. And I learned that the words Gravlux comes from grav, to bury, and you used to bury the salmon in the soil. Nowadays, you just bury it in a bed of salt and sugar and spices, and lux means salmon. Back to the cabin after another wonderful trip packed with lots of delicious food. Great for getting new recipe ideas. My Gravlax Poke Bowl is a Swedified version of this Hawaiian classic. It uses Gravlax flavours with Swedish garnishes for a delicious twist. So I've got a piece of salmon fillet here. You just want to dab off any excess moisture in a clean tea towel, because that will affect the flavour of the salmon. So when you use a salmon fillet, try and get a fillet which is like even in terms of thickness. It just helps to equally distribute the brine. And then for the brine, I'm gonna do a mixture of flavors. So I've got some white peppercorns, lemon zest. You'll notice there's a bit of a theme with the flavors. It's always a bit of lemon zest involved. Some fresh dill. Finally chop that. Two 
two ingredients you need for the Gravlax is salt and sugar because that will make your brine slightly sweet and salty at the same time. You're literally going to bury the salmon in the salt and sugar. So it's a sweet and savory brine and the salt goes into. Mix it together. And then you need a resealable food bag and just tip it in there. Salmon goes in. Make sure your bag is well sealed. And then it's time for a little massage. So this is a fairly quick brine. You don't need to do this overnight. Just takes a couple hours in total. So once the sugar and salt is well massaged into the salmon, you can set it aside for 40 minutes at room temperature, and then you can put it in the fridge. You need to turn the salmon over so the brine infuses both sides. While that's brining, I'm going to cook some rice, hot stock. And the rice goes in. Cover that up. While that's cooking away, I can prepare my garnish. I'm using a mandolin, but if you don't have a mandolin, a sharp knife will do. So I have some beetroot ready cooked. If you don't want to get pink fingers, use gloves. Right. So. Give your mandolin a quick rinse. So same thing with the radishes. If you don't have radishes and beetroot in the fridge, you could use other vegetables. A carrot would be just as nice. Some sliced cabbage. It's really whatever you find in the fridge. I need half a lemon for later, but I can slice some wedges up now. Now, the important part, I need to make my Gravlax dressing. And the dressing is inspired by the dressing you have for Gravlax, which is a sweet mustard, a bit of honey. I like to add some Dijon mustard just to give it a bit more of a kick and some oil to bring everything together. Dijon mustard, a little bit of honey, the runny kind makes it easier. Sunflower oil, basically oil which doesn't have a strong taste, so extra virgin olive oil is not the oil you want to use in this dressing. Some lemon juice, squeeze that in. Some salt. And don't forget a little bit of dill for this as well. Finely chop it. Give your jar a shake to mix all your ingredients together. A little taste. Always good to taste it on something because that's how you're going to eat it anyway. Mmm, perfect. Right, so I've got my dressing, I have my garnishes, just need to peel my horseradish. This bit is what I love the most it's that spiciness you're going to add to the dish. It's very similar to adding some wasabi to your poke bowl. I'm gonna grate some of this. This has been sitting at room temperature for enough time, so I'm gonna put it in the fridge until I need it. Time to get the salmon out the fridge. Before you can use it, you need to give it a little rinse. Otherwise, it'll be too salty and too sweet. So you want to give it a little pat down and remove any excess moisture. So you can actually feel how the brine has changed the texture of the fish. It's become a lot firmer, denser, colours slightly intensified. So 
Just want to slice even slices. Don't make it too thin, don't make it too thick. So I've got like about just over half a centimetre there. So that usually helps to have a very sharp knife when you're doing this. Okay, now it's all about bringing everything together. Rice. I got some of the beetroot, some radishes. And then I have some of my favorite Swedish pickles from the fridge. So I've got pink pickled onions and some pickled cucumber. They really add that extra Swedish touch to the dish. To make your own pickled cucumbers, bring 400 milliliters water, 300 milliliters of vinegar, 100 grams of sugar, 30 grams of salt, and a bunch of fresh dill to the boil. Stir and leave to cool before adding 750 grams of sliced cucumbers. Store in a sterilized jar. Don't forget the salmon. Give your dressing a little stir before you put it on. A bit of a spicy note with the horseradish. Put as much or as little as you like. And then one last touch, a sprig of dill. And that's my Swedified Hawaiian version of a poke bowl. With the open water in the west and the Baltic Sea in the east, it's no wonder that so much Swedish cuisine includes fish and seafood. But to finish it off with a sweet coconut chocolate and berry mountain is not bad either.